you love movies and movie discussions, you've come to the right place. Who am I, you ask? I am The Wiz, and I am here today with... Zero. Zero. How are you doing today? A little under the weather today, yeah. but um, definitely a little bit better now. Well, that's good. That's good. And we are here to discuss the movie from 1978, National Lampoon's Animal House, directed by John Landis. Zero, you discussed with me, uh, I think, on the episode, the last episode, that you saw this a while ago with a bunch of your college friends. Why don't you discuss what that was like when you watch it around that time? It was interesting, mostly because just I was starting to enter into my college life and stuff like that. And of course, just I had some friends who were just like, oh, man, uh, just Animal House is so good. It, uh, it's an extreme parody of like Greek life, but, you know, just uh, it's still so good. And I didn't really much care about the whole Greek life thing uh, either, but I was just like, all right sure whatever I'll, I'll i'll watch it and and see i was like all right i mean it's it's a it's a fun enough film but i don't think it's like anything that i'm super interested in or whatever so overall i thought it was an okay movie but just ultimately it wasn't for me but i can get why it's uh, it's sort of a, a classic something that i think the library of congress has even filed as something that is historically significant in the realm of uh, comedy films god for, for something like the library of congress actually use this as something that's significant in american films kind of makes me laugh a little bit i i like you i heard that this movie was really funny but when we were growing up, we still had these types of comedies. We had movies like There's Something About Mary, and I, I think another one would be American Pie. Uh, old School was there too. So it just seemed kind of weird to watch this type of film that is set in the past when we're getting those same type of films. So I just didn't really bother with it. But now that it seems like this type of comedy is not being made anymore, I think it was an interesting throwback to get into. So why don't we just get right into the review of Animal House, starring John Belushi and directed by John Landis. I came out of this going, I understand why some people love this movie, but I think other films in the future have done it better. I think this is kind of like a great sort of like foundationary film in the comedy genre, but... Later films definitely iterated on all the jokes and gags that were uh, featured in this movie. Yeah, I, I think with this type of film, it really matters of the time and place, which is why I was kind of stunned that this was a period movie. I mean, this was done in 78, but this is set in the early 60s. I don't know about you. Did you have to remind yourself that this was set in the 60s at any point in time in the, in the movie? A little bit, because I was just like, oh, this is like in the 80s and stuff. And then they reiterate like the year and stuff every once in a while in the movie. I was just like, oh my god, really? This is in the 60s? <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, like, I, except for maybe one scene in the film, I don't see the need, the need to have this be set in the 60s. This could have been set in, uh, I would have believed in the 70s. And, and maybe a, a difference here and there would be there, but other than that, like, I don't understand why it needed to be set in the 60s at all. I, it just seemed like an unnecessary detail. I really didn't find any performance to be that much of a standout. I can't really give a performance where I really feel strongly or negatively about. Even like John Belushi's performance, who uh, plays, I think, the character that he is most known for. I was kind of like, eh... He's fine, I guess. Belushi's character was more kind of in like the gross out humor sort of genre, especially like with some of the food related gags and stuff like that. And I'm not what I'm not much one for gross out humor. I was like, all right, I, I can see this is like the origin story of like the gross out um, humor genre and everything. <laughs> Yeah, I'm okay with some gross up, but I think as we've discussed in the Tampopo review, when it comes to food, I'm like, no, I'm not, I'm not into that. Like when, when he was in the scene in the the cafeteria, I had to look away because like Jesus Christ. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My thing with the film is I was kind of surprised how nobody in this film is likable, and I mean nobody in this film is likable. I just found it weird. Even the characters that you're supposed to be rooting for, which is the, the frat house that is being attacked on all sides, are kind of assholes. <laughs> they're, they're really detestable. 
in certain scenes and in certain ways in the movie. There were definitely some moments where, like, you could tell that there were some characters that the film tries to say, hey, you're not supposed to like these people because these people are just absolutely antagonizing the Delta House. But at the same time, it's like you mentioned, just a lot of the guys in the Delta House, they're, they're kind of jerks and oh. they're kind of shitty. So it's just like, I know where the film is going. I just find it very hard to find the strength and the conviction to say, yeah, I really don't like those Delta guys at all. And my mind just keeps drifting towards that. It's just like, uh, I, I just don't like them. I know the movie's trying to say, hey, yo, the Delta house guys uh, are the good guys. Uh, root for them. It's just like, I don't know. I, I'm not feeling it. <laughs> yeah. I think what this film is trying to do is basically, yeah, everyone's unlikable, but these are the assholes that you want to like. Like, you know the type of people, especially when you were younger, where you knew they were absolute assholes, but because they were fun to hang out with and because they were just funny in a certain way, you hung out with them anyway. Even though they were absolute assholes and deep down you didn't like them, you hung out with them anyway for that reason alone. I think that was this collection of characters where you have all these characters who do detestable things or are just flat out disgusting or just flat out sad in some aspects. It's almost like the, the film kind of wants you to excuse it a little bit. Is it, is it that the film is trying to excuse their behavior or are they showing it in a light where, oh yeah, these guys are assholes, but these are the ones that you're supposed to like. These are the ones that you want to know, you want to really like these and root for these characters. I think it's more like an extreme caricature of sure. like cool frats of just hey this Greek house is so cool but you know they're they're being antagonized by like like the snooty frat houses so you got to root for the delta house because they're the cool house. I just sat here watching this going neither of these guys are cool. <laughs> I, I don't like any of these people. Like, especially the guy who's getting jerked off with like uh with rubber gloves. I was like who does that? <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. That was kind of a, like a weird reoccurring joke to see like like multiple times in the movie. I was just like, really? Just you've got you've got the snooty guy with ED problems. <laughs> I don't think it's an ED problem. I think it's just that he's a closet homosexual. That that's probably it too. But I, I, yeah, I, it was just like like oh, god damn it. Yeah, I, I think that's what they were inferring to because it, the every girl that he was with would say, "Is it gonna get hard yet?" I'm like, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I guess the, we're, we're at the writing now. As I was watching this film, I was thinking about old school. Now, old school takes a lot of what they do in this movie and essentially modernizes it. I, I, I didn't realize that until uh, what I watched this movie, that really old school aped a bunch of stuff on uh, from this movie. But maybe because old school is set more in a time that's more contemporary for me and for us, I kind of felt old school was a lot funnier than this and when they get into let's say certain scenes where the people are doing very questionable things i found old school to be funnier in a way that didn't make me feel as icky <laughs> i guess whereas this one i'm watching is going uh really okay it's kind of like i said in the beginning uh, for me i, I I saw it as, okay, I get it. This is sort of the, the origin of, like, a lot of American comedy movies and stuff like that. But at the same time, it just had me yearning for some of the more modernized takes on some of the jokes and gags that they were doing. I was just like, oh, man, I remember this one more modern movie did this joke in such a more funny and contemporary way that I loved it so much. I think you just hit the nail on the head. I, this is basically a blueprint of what future movies would be. And a lot of the times, we've talked about this too, sometimes the blueprint is the best version of that movie, and everything that iterates out of that just seems to be a little less from that original blueprint. But many other films that become the inspiration of others iterate it to a better quality. And I just think this is just a blueprint that's been iterated better in other films. I'm not saying that the film is not funny in certain circumstances. It is. What I think this film doesn't do well for me, that I think others do, is that even later films like American Pie, Old School, and stuff like that, or even Wedding Crasher, yes, the characters that you're rooting for, yeah, they're kind of scummy, but they're likable scummy. They're scummy to a point where they're redeemable. They, they are deep down a good person, whereas in this movie, 
I think every one of these people are detestable assholes. And I just was like, like it's kind of hard for me to actually sympathize with them. I think is where it is. Like, I think there's actually more likable characters in, let's say, American Pie than there is in this movie. Overall, just felt it was okay. I just felt it was more like a blueprint for just everything that was to come later on down the line. Which, again, it's not to try to, like, dog on the movie and just go, oh, this movie bad. Um, But it's more in light of having seen some of the more uh, contemporary comedies that sort of look to Animal House as sort of a blueprint on how to do an American style comedy movie just my mind seems to more gravitate towards those more modern movies instead though it is kind of funny because like uh, there have been so many shows that have sort of parodied the shenanigans of uh, Animal House Um, easily what comes to mind is more The Simpsons uh, being one of them uh, where Homer goes to college and then the other one being Futurama, where there's a robot fraternity at Mars University that basically is absolutely reviled by the Dean. And the Dean in that episode even uses the same terminology. Robot houses on double secret probation. And I was just <laughs> like, oh my god. That's an Animal House reference. Holy shit. <laughs> well, let's do a minor spoiler real quick. And... I want to spoil the end of the movie, which is basically that the heroes don't win in this movie. They actually get their frat shut down by the Dean. I'm kind of surprised by that ending because this just seems like a movie as farcical as it is. I didn't think that they would actually have an ending where really the heroes would not come out on top. Now, you can say that the way the film ends that they kind of did, but not really. They they caused a lot of destruction, but did they win? I don't don't think so. Yeah, the ending is kind of a cacophony of chaos. Yeah. And I think where they kind of try to show you that the heroes win, in a way, is just sort of in the ending credit sequence where you see the futures of all the characters and everything, like all the snooty frat house guys from the good frat house they end up in like um horrible horrible situations i think like one guy gets shot by his platoon in vietnam or something oh yeah and i'm just like i'm just like okay i can see this was the origin for for the simpsons gag where just you've got like a bunch of characters after the homer college episode where they show you kind of like what they move on to and everything i, I think once he was raped in prison it was like Jesus. Yeah. So that, yeah. This was like, whoa, what a what a dark turn. Yeah, that was <laughs> freaking dark. There are some dark shit in this movie, like surprisingly dark shit. But even then, it's like done incredibly lightly, which is kind of weird. I don't know if that's just kind of the way it was back then when it comes to these comedies, where they would take these really screwed up situations and then they'd be like, ah, you know, it's just for fun. Get into final thoughts for Animal House. I think the film is okay. I, I think you put it best where this is. This is essentially just a blueprint film now, where it just shows where this type of film, maybe not started, but where others really crib from. There are some laughs in it. There is some funny things. Uh, One thing I didn't note, but I will say here, the music is great in this movie. I love the music in this movie. But other than that, it's okay. It's interesting to see, just to see how these types of films came to be and where it started from. But nothing more than that. I'm going to give this two and a half stars out of five. For me, I'll probably be a bit on the low side. I'll probably say right around 40%. It's not a terrible movie, but I think... Like I've mentioned so many times throughout this review, just I see this as the origin story for Blueprint for the American comedy, especially with some of the gags and some of the jokes that they go into. It kind of runs the gamut. You've got like dark jokes, you've got kind of silly slapstickish humor sort of jokes. It kind of runs the gamut in my mind. Overall, I mean, in if if you're someone who values like historical significance, then I would say this is definitely one not to miss. You should definitely watch it especially because of the historical significance. But if you're just trying to just find comedy for comedy's sake, you can definitely do better with some of the newer films that have come out uh, since Animal House arrived way, way back. So um, you're better off uh, with some of the contemporaries that um, you had mentioned. So stuff like American Pie, Old School, and so on and so forth. 
I get why I think a lot of people seem to love this movie. And I guess if you were into that situation, like you said, like the, the Greek life and the college in the door and the fraternity thing, uh, maybe I, I could see that kind of attachment that you would have with this film. But like you said, I'm just surprised by how much this movie has been cribbed. And I think it's been cribbed better at that point. So, yeah, I'm like, I, I I don't give it a low rating. I'm just going to give it right in the middle. But I do agree with you. If you are just watching this for a, just to laugh and, you know, have a good time, you could. But I think you can find better. I, I also think that if you are, I would say, a younger person and you're thinking about watching this, you might want to steer clear. Probably stick to old school or something like that. Two and a half stars out of five for me, 40% for zero. I mean, I think you said it best. Uh, if you just want to do it for like, oh, this is what comedies used to be, probably the best way to watch it in that context. All right, Zero, so that's the end of this episode. But before we go, let's talk about the movie that we're going to be watching next week. Zero, what are we watching? It is the sci-fi movie They Live. Yes, John Carpenter's They Live from 1988, starring... Rowdy Roddy Piper. Man, I've heard so many people praise this movie and say, oh, this is a great movie, especially ones that like sci-fi and horror. Uh, I've heard a lot of people love this movie, but like I couldn't get past like Rowdy Roddy Piper is a, in a good movie. Really? But then again, I grew up with Hulk Hogan movies and they were all awful. I, I mean, I think Three Ninjas 3 was his best and that's saying something <laughs> that's saying something right there we're gonna watch the sci-fi classic they live starring rowdy roddy piper and keith david directed by john carpenter i am the Wiz, and i'm zero and we'll talk to you next time bye <laughs>